Okay, so now we're going to tape up for the red. And this is what we're going to do with the actual rolls of tape rather than cutting for most of it. Some of it we do need to have the, the cut pieces. So, <clears throat> what I usually start with, in addition to having high-res photos handy, uh, is this outside piece of tape that goes all the way around. And you want to be able to see where it goes in or out. You know, it's never perfectly right in the center. It's usually more towards the back than it is towards the, the front of the guitar. And we can tell right here with the back, this upper edge, how much this tape comes down onto that belly cut and then comes back up and goes around. So around the belly cut, it's more, it's almost all on the back versus up all, along the center on the ridge. So we're going to get that right. And this is the front that I go by. And there's one of the backs that I go by. And I even have uh, a back here from the 1979 version, which uh, I'm going to rotate because I want it like that. So this, uh, the reason I use this one is because it was fairly freshly done, but it's got fewer of the reflectors on it, so I can see more of the stripes and where they go and don't go. So, if you remember, here's that white piece that we have not done yet. So I'm going to mask things off and put that on first. And what we're going to do is make sure that once we put the tape in here with what we need, we take a garbage bag, put it over the whole guitar, cut a little slit, wrap that plastic around then put more tape down so that the only part that's exposed with no gaps or anything else is just where that paint's going to hit. That's all we want to do. Okay? So, but looking at this, you'll see long narrow angle, triangle. And there's a little change up in here, which if we look Uh, this one, you can see how it's got a little curved end right there. It's got a little hammerhead to it. So we're going to put this piece in. It's not very long because this black stripe right here goes and continues up. So it's only it's only from about here. It's only from about here to there. That's all the longer it is, so we're going to get that in first. And I'm guesstimating with my tear here, but we'll make adjustments as needed. And I know that this comes back a little bit. And remember we use the the negative part, so that would be the negative part. It's not accurate yet, but we're going to make it accurate. And that piece is just junk. So, so we've got a fairly straight line there. Now we need to pull out a little divot for that hammerhead. And I'm thinking that is about right. So that's going to give us the white, and then we know that some of that wood is exposed. And we're going to mask it off so that it doesn't go there yet. And 
And then we mask off the ends here so that we can control it. And then it's this piece right here, this stripe that comes up and defines where the outer edge is, which is about right there. And that's it. Now I'll put another piece down just so I can give myself more to tape on. So you're going to do this probably with every, every guitar that you, you work on. So it's good to have some good cheap bags uh, that are unscented. Uh, the scented part is a kind of powdery uh, coating that they put on the inside which gives it that smell and you don't want that to come off and leave any residue to keep it from unraveling. Right over top of where I'm going to eventually want to spray. Then from here, I am just going to pull this out some where I want it. And then curl the edges over, whatever you need to do so that you have room. I'm going to go large like that so i got plenty of room so that the tape I put over it is going to hold it down. And something I do is I, I come in push down, grab the bag, and then pull back to where I want it. So watch. Put it down, lift it up, pull it back a little bit, and then right there is where I want it. And I will do that all the way around this hole that we want. Just like that. And then these are good. Just like that. And I'm going to pull in and fix with my razor just how I want it. All right, so I'm going to spray this real quick and I'll be right back. All right, whenever you're done spraying, and if you intend to use a can again at some point, you want to clean that tip off. I keep acetone in one of these glass jars with a lid on it. But I can now clean that tip and, and not have to worry about any caked on dried paint down the road. Because that's part of that worn area. So enough to cover the black so you can't see it and you don't want it light enough to be barely there. So somewhere in between. But So it's not a big deal. I mean, you're not going to go through a bag every single time. There's just no need. Pull it back, give yourself room to work with. Now when it's time to lift this up, lift it all up in one piece and then make sure it doesn't touch the rest of the guitar in case there's any wet paint left. So all right, I lifted that, I peel that out, and then right now you've got your spot done. And you just want to slowly peel it off, like that. So it's been literally three minutes since I painted that and nothing is coming off. <clears throat> I ran over with my razor to knock down some of the edges and add some of that kind of faded look to it. Now this gets covered in the red anyway. So I just wanted to show that it was worn at one time. And you know, you can always reveal a little bit of that black along the outside edge if you want. And that's it. That's the whole part. We can work on the front. One of the first things I do is I want to get the parts that I don't want to forget about later. I add this little piece of tape, the tape that is still on there to this day, which we now know is gaffer's tape. Remind ourselves, 
is to have this whole area painted white. It's easy to forget this. I've had to completely come in and take acetone and remove all the red that I sprayed, clean it all up, mask everything off, and then spray this all white again, which then screwed up the red on this side, and it was a huge pain. So do it right the first time. Then we can start with this outside edge using the half inch tape. And if you ever have a question on the thickness of a tape, bring up your detailed images and find one. I like this one because it shows me, you know, the one thing that's pretty similar between all bodies is the thickness of the heel. That's left, uh, you know, in, in the neck pocket. And I know that this tape, when you put it on here, leaves about the right amount, top and bottom. So I know that this is uh, probably pretty correct. Now all these tapes are done in metric sizes. You know, I'd really try to make sure that I get that nice evenness and the overlap will just be, I mean, we're talking two millimeters, one millimeter. You know, that's ideally where I would go. So look at, if you can look at the difference between, I don't know if you can see it, but that's one millimeter. And I just think it's safer to assume that a single piece of tape at that width is going to work rather than doubling things up all the way around. There's times when you do want to do that. And that's because rounded edges with this tape ends up making it buckle or fold or do whatever. And by adding another piece of tape, you can make sure that a smooth line is the end result. So if you, if you wanted a good place to start the tape, it'd be right here on this upper edge of the belly cut. So I'm gonna start the tape right up in here so that I can go this direction and make sure that I get the right amount covered. So I can tell already about how much this top gets covered with a straight line. And what I want to do is reproduce this right here where the, the piece to the right just comes under the red while the one on the left goes deeply under the red. And then it curves up while still mostly being on the back. And it covers just the tops of these, these little black marks right there. And then comes back up into the center. So maybe like that. find our top picture right there you can see that it's fairly narrow the, the standard half inch here and gets wider up in here from about this stripe all the way up probably towards the end of uh, the upper arm there so we've got the standard half inch and you can see how wide all the way around before I dive into all that and there's a bit of a curve coming down here curving towards this heel because he wanted it centered you could tell but then he realized that he's going to have to move the tape over to get it down to the center here so it curves down slightly through there and that's another area where you could use two pieces of tape to stop the bubbling up that happens, the folding over of the tape. So right now, I'm in a good spot. And now, I'm pretty much there. I'm right in the center. 
so it really had to come down here at an angle you'll see it it had to come down from and go way down and we can verify that by looking at this piece here up here it's more in the center you'll see right here it's more in the center in this upper arm and that white stripe curves slowly down to the heel and then hits it and goes over the center of it right through here it comes in at a slight angle and then he has it come back up into the middle and then it continues all the way around and from this point on it's more towards the back than it is towards the top and that's true all the way around oh here we go so here's the here's the bottom edge down here and you can see the stripe is far more towards the back of the guitar than evenly placed throughout the height of the body and that's because it came off of that heel and he didn't want to bend the tape to get it back over into the center so that's why it's more towards the back and you can see how much of this well-known spot gets covered so that's where we are right now and as I continue it see how much gets covered right there and if you look that's about the right exact amount he's got so we're gonna keep it down there and run it so it's smooth and we're gonna go all the way around Now we're back up to where we started. And here again, we want to look at images to guide us. You can see from the front, you can't see any of that white tape. So we know it's on the back edge of that peak. All right, so let me cut this. I'll show you where we are. So we came around the back here so that you don't see it from the front. And then it naturally picks up more and comes right down into here. Now there's a second piece of tape from this stripe and going over to this stripe. And it's probably because of how much it had to curve in. And he liked a lot of this in here. So we're gonna keep a lot of that. Had he picked it up from where the curve starts and what he did was add it so that this line continues even though this gets wider I think he was very much into the aesthetics of his paint job nothing wrong with that there so what that does is maintain a lot of the work that he did underneath here that he was fairly proud of so now we've got that and now we can come in with the same size tape and start working on this upper arm part right here